All right, so this is 3.2, part one, logarithmic functions. We're going to get into the first part of logarithms. So we're going to talk about logarithmic functions and how we manipulate them. This is something you definitely did in Algebra 2, um, and we're just going to continue on with that. So we're going to talk about uh, evaluating expressions involving uh, logs. Sorry for the typo there. And we're going to sketch and analyze graphs, but really this is part one and this is part two. So we're really only going to talk about the top part today. Okay, we're going to talk about the definition of a logger right off the bat. So this is really important for you to understand. It, it differentiates between exponential functions and logarithmic functions. You see we have log base b of x equals y. So that is true if and only if b of y equals x. For example, if I were to give you log base 3 of 9, and let's say we wanted that to be equal to 2. Well, that would mean, and that's only true if and only if 3 to the second power equals 9, which is true. Okay, so that's where this definition comes from. The base to the power will always equal what you're taking the logarithm of. And a couple of uh, rules and definitions we have here are b has to be greater than 0. Uh, we're not doing negative. Uh, we can't have negative base. Our b ha cannot be equal to 1, mainly because 1 as a base in an exponential function is just going to be the same thing over and over again. It's just going to be 1. And then x has to be greater than 0. So we cannot get a negative answer uh, for when we take it when we use an ex, uh, exponential function. All exponential functions are greater than zero, so we can't have a negative answer uh, for our x. Here. So let's look at a few examples here. Get right into this. We have log base three of eighty-one. Basically, this is asking three to what power equals eighty-one. You can do that pretty easily and realize the answer is four. We look at the second one, log base five of the square root of five. So that means we have five to what power equals the square root of five. Hopefully you recall back to your algebra two days that a square root represents a fractional power. So in this case, our answer is one half. Moving on down to the third one, we have seven to what power equals one over 49. And now because we have a fraction, you should be thinking negative exponents. So what what exponent will equal 49 is 2, but because it's a fraction of 1 over 49, our answer here is going to have to be negative 2. And then our last one over here, we have 2 to what power equals 2. That one should be pretty easy. We just get an answer of 1. Okay, so those should be very, very straightforward, pretty easy. Okay, let's talk about some basic properties of logs. So here we have log base b of 1 equals 0. Basically, it's saying is no matter what the base here is, it's going to be equal to zero. Why? Because if we write out our, our, our basic properties or what we know about exponential functions, b to the zero power will always equal one. Anything to the zero power will always equal one. That's why this property holds all the time. Next one, log base b of b will be equal to one. Essentially, your log base b and b are canceling out, but the reason for that working is because b to the 1 power is equal to b, always. Okay, down here, a little bit more important. So log base b of b to the uh, b to the x. So again, we can look at this the same way. b to the x power is equal to b to the x power. So we know that works. But also, you could think of it like this. Your log base b and your b will cancel out. So all you'll be left with is x equals x. So the log base b and the b will cancel out. They're the same. They're going to cancel each other out. Over here, same idea. A power or a base of an exponent of b and a log base b will also cancel out. And then we're just left with x equals x. So that's why it's equal to x. Okay, so log base, uh, log base b of b will cancel out and b to the power of log base b will always cancel out. Okay, so using some of these properties, again, we don't always have to use our properties. We're just going to run through these really quickly. 5 to what power equals 125? Pretty easy. Sorry, that's not 2. It should be 3. 5 to the third power equals 125. Uh, we have 9 to what power equals 81? And that is just 2. We have 3 to what power equals 3? And that's just 1. And then we actually have to apply a property in our last one. We have 12 to the power of log base 12. So the 12, the 12 and the log base 12 are going to cancel out. So our answer is just 4.7.
Okay, so that's one where you actually have to use the property and cross off your log base 12 and your 12. Okay, so let's talk about something that where a base is not given to you. We call this a common log. And a common log always has kind of an imaginary base of 10 on the bottom. There. You'll never see it written like that, though. So you just need to understand that when you have log of x, that means log base 10 of x. So it's important for you to know the difference between a log and a base and a log that doesn't have a base, knowing that it's just log base 10. So, for example, if we wanted the log of 100 and what that's equal to, you'd have to know, okay, the base there is 10 because there's no base given, so 10 to what power equals 100, so therefore the answer is 2. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples with that. So we have log of 1,000, that's basically saying 10 to what power equals 1,000, and 10 to the power of 3 equals 1,000. We have log of 0 .001, so again, that means we have base 10, 10 to the power of what equals 0 .001, and 10 to the power of negative 3 equals 0 .001, that's 1 1,000th, 1, so that just means a negative power. And then sometimes when we have something like this, we realize that we may just have to use a calculator. So this is going to be a calculator. You know, there's no way that you'd be able to tell me 10 to the what power equals 26. You can't do it. You need a calculator for that. Okay, and you can just punch it right into your calculator. Okay, this one over here, we've already said that we cannot have a negative number here. So this one is undefined. I mean, real simple. We're just rushing through these pretty quickly because that it doesn't really take a whole lot to kind of see what's going on. You either understand the definition of it or you don't. And if you have more questions, you can just certainly bring them to class. So the last thing is, is we want to talk about a logarithm that has base e. So if we wrote it out as log base e of x, that is the exact same thing as saying ln of x. It's a called a natural log. So you'll always see that written. So the important thing there is, is that we have e to the x, sorry, e to the y equals x. I know that didn't write out very well, but e to the y equals x. Okay, same property, x has to be greater than zero. Okay, we have our e to the y equals x. Okay, that is the, di the difference between what we've been doing all along. It's the only difference is, is our base is now this letter. But remember, that letter is a number. It's a number in your calculator. It's just being denoted with a letter instead. So it's a natural log. Natural logs and e work together. So looking at this, same properties. ln is base e. So ln, base e, and e are going to cancel out. So our answer here is just 0.7. Over here, we have ln of negative 5. Same properties apply. We can't have a negative. So this is undefined. And then here we have e to the ln of 6. e and ln cancel out. Answer, 6. And then ln of 4, there's no way again we go e to what power equals 4. There's no way you're going to be able to figure that out without a calculator. So once again, this is a calculator problem that you can just punch in and get the answer for. So that's really all I have. I, I thought this was pretty straightforward for our first part of logarithms. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you bring those to me and I will see you in class.